River cruising. All-inclusive or inclusive? Luxury or premium? Let's compare. Stay tuned. My special guest today is Laura Dotson, a travel advisor with Cruise and Travel Specialists of Portland, Oregon. Laura specializes in cruises and cruise vacations for satisfied clients in and around Portland and across the country since 2002. Hi, Laura. Welcome back to RTE Travel Talk. Great to be here today, Ken. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you back with us. So, Laura, we're getting a lot of questions from viewers and listeners about river cruising and the difference between the popular lines. And today I'd like to take a little time and talk about inclusive river cruising versus maybe perhaps the less inclusive options and also discuss a couple of perhaps some of the lesser known cruise lines like uh, for example, Emerald Waterways and Scenic Cruises and compare them to Viking. How does that sound? That sounds great. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. All right, super. So Laura, on a river cruise in general, what do you consider an all-inclusive an, an all -inclusive river cruise? So an all-inclusive river cruise is one that includes all of your excursions, mm -hmm. your beverages, your gratuities, transfers, and all around has usually a higher notch of service and maybe cuisine and more attentive. Right, right. So if we were to look at these three river cruise lines that we're talking about today, Viking, Emerald, and Scenic, how would they rank in, in terms of inclusiveness? So for sure, it would be Scenic Luxury Cruise Lines. Right. And they started back in 2008. Well, actually back in 2006, chartered some cruise ships, but then built their own. And they are known as the spaceships and they give extra space. Also, a lot of times with all-inclusive, they'll accommodate less passengers. So the ratio crew to passengers is, is a better fit. They have additional bells and whistles too and amenities we can go into. But for sure, Scenic Luxury Cruise Line would be the most inclusive of the three we're comparing today. Okay, so the, it would it would be scenic and then would yeah would emerald and viking be more or less on yeah par? so the way i kind of when when clients call me and they say hey you know this is what we're looking for this is what our budget is where we want to go all right. of that the first thing i let them know everyone's heard of viking it's the big daddy on all the river cruise lines because of downton abbey classical music <laughs> stations they've really advertised the heck out of them yeah so the thing that everyone needs to know they marketed their ships as the long ships 443 right. feet by length 38 feet by width to get through the locks right. well guess what ken Emerald Waterways and Scenic Luxury Cruise Ships are exactly the same size. So with Viking, they will accommodate 190 passengers. So they squeeze more passengers on their ships. And they do that because they offer some smaller cabins than the other two cruise lines. Emerald Waterways, they have 180 passengers on their ships and Scenic about 160. So that's so, quite a difference. Yeah, there is a difference. There is a yeah. difference and there's and and where you can really notice that is in the public spaces on board the ship. As an example, Emerald Waterways, they have a pool and it has a retractable roof. And in the evenings, that pool, it has a floor that rises and it becomes a cinema. So, uh, and they serve popcorn and uh, so it's really, really enjoyable. Also, both Scenic and Emerald Waterways have a fleet of e-bikes. Right. And um, boy, I could tell you all about that. And, and I was riding along the Danube on an e-bike after during a scenic cruise. And we stopped at a little pub and had a beer. It was fabulous. I cannot <laughs> even tell you how much fun those e-bikes are. So you do have more amenities on the ship because you have less passengers. So they have that space. Right. Um, you have a small spa and a small gym on Emerald and Scenic ships, where Viking, it is mainly cabins and dining. All of them have upper sun decks, of course. Right. But Viking is going to be a little bit more streamlined and not have uh, those special amenities on board their ships. So let's take let's take a look at each one. Tell us a little bit about Emerald. Emerald Waterways, I absolutely love. They started in 2013. Again, the name of their ships are called the Star Ships. They are the same size as the Viking long ships. Right. They are owned and operated by Scenic. All of their marketing and operations is in Switzerland. When people say, oh, it's going to be all Australians on board, but it's mainly North America, 
uh, UK, Canadian, so mainly English speaking clients on board. The other thing about Emerald is it has a lot of activities. So there, they have choices for the excursions and those are included in your price. Where with Viking, you will have an excursion in every port of call, but that excursion is going to be kind of a basic or general overview walking tour busing tour. Maybe you'll have a tasting. By the way, the guides on Viking are fantastic. They do a really, really good job. With Emerald, though, you get choices and you even have the option of active excursions. So that would be with the e-bikes or hiking or canoeing. They have some really fun and interesting excursions. And I would say Emerald caters to a little bit younger guests, maybe okay. 50 plus, or those of us that are over that age, but are really active and want to enjoy the pool, the biking, the hiking, all of those features. So Emerald's a little bit more active ship then. It's a little bit more active ship. It yeah. is still premium, just yeah. like biking. It's a premium uh, product. Right. They have wonderful food. They have the main dining, just like Viking does. Right. They have the sun deck where you can bring light snacks, beverages up there. Both Viking and Emerald, unless you're in a suite, do not offer room service, where Scenic Luxury River Cruise does offer room service. With Viking, they have a beautiful, it's called the Aqua V Terrace. They right. do put on a fantastic buffet. It's at the front of the ship with tables, and it really is a lovely terrace for dining. So you mentioned that Emerald is actually owned by Scenic? Yes. Glenn Maroney, Australian. 2006, he actually started uh, with the river cruises for Scenic, and then in 2013, brought us Emerald Waterways. And Emerald Waterways is not a luxury cruise line. It's premium. They are also very inclusive, Emerald. They include your gratuities, where Viking doesn't, and they include transfers. Even if you don't take Emerald's air, they include the transfers. Okay. So long as you're coming into either an Emerald hotel or an em you know the Emerald ship on the day of embarkation. And when I'm kind of going head to head, like when a client says, well, let's compare Emerald directly with Viking. For me, outside of those amenities on board the ship, is the excursions. And when you go on these river cruises, one of the most important things is the immersiveness into the cultures and history right. of the area. And Emerald gives you options that are included. They do have some uh, optional excursions in addition at a fee, but they give you more than just one included excursion in, on a port of call. But again, with Viking though, you'll get, you have one excursion that's included, but that's just your general tour. Is exactly. There, but when exactly. we think about so, Viking, is there in that same yeah. port, is, it, is there also optional ones that people can take? There are. So with Viking. But that's at a cost. Yeah, it is at a cost. So as right. an example, if you're in Vienna, I, in fact, I just priced this out for a client. For a Vienna e-bike excursion on Viking, that was coming in at $149 a person to go to Schoenbrunn Palace, which part of the Habsburg dynasty, which a lot of people want to do when they're in Vienna, $89 a person. So the Viking price point a lot of times will reflect a lower price. But when you start to add in some of the inclusions that the other cruise lines offer, then you're getting more into apples to apples. Right. Got it. Got it. So tell me about Scenic. Scenic's I luxury, obviously. I love Scenic. And I think hmm. Scenic is actually a really good value. First of all, I love the fact that there's only 160 passengers. So crew to guest ratio, you get fantastic service. They are known, the crew, for running up, giving you a hug. They really get to know you on Scenic. Most of their ships, not all, have a small swimming pool on board. Right. So on hot European days, that's really fun to be able to get into that pool. They have the fleet of e-bikes. Scenic includes even premium pour beverages. What I loved was the mini bar, and they stock it with things like Pringles and chocolates, beer, wine, all of that, and they replenish that every day. So it is very inclusive. The cabins are known as suites, and right. every cabin has an assigned butler that really goes out of their way to do some, some special services for you, including, depending on what deck you are, laundry, which is really nice, especially on lengthier cruises. Right. Scenic has their main dining room, just like Viking and Emerald does, but they also have, on every sailing for every guest, a restaurant called Portobello's, and it is an outstanding five-course meal pairing with wine. Only 32 guests per night are invited to that, and you will definitely be invited. 
well worth it. They have their diamond deck, which is the top deck. All of the cruise lines, Ken, are three passenger decks. So you start on the lower deck, deck right. one, and those are river view cabins. You move to deck two, they are either French or full balcony cabins, and then deck three. And on Scenic, deck three has a special restaurant called Le Rêve. And that is only for 10 guests. And that is a really special customized dinner by one of the chefs. Wow. Um, so when it comes to scenic, then there's two basically specialty restaurants on board the ships. Yeah. And the other really wonderful thing that I love about scenic that the other two don't have with Viking and Emerald, they have, I wouldn't even call it a snack bar because it's over the top. They put out all these little deli sandwiches whether it's egg salad, vegetarian, chicken set sandwiches, they have pastries galore, drinks, non-alcoholic, alcoholic, whatever you want. And you can get that pretty much throughout the day. So they, they really put on a wonderful spread on Scenic. Wow. Wow. The ships are similar in size and length. Mm -hmm. What about stateroom size? Now, you'd mentioned that with Viking, we're going to put 190 passengers mm -hmm. on board the, the same size ship. And how they do that is there's a sacrifice in the size of your staterooms. How big a difference actually is it, Laura? Laura? So what Viking did, which is actually pretty creative, I think, mm. they did some French balconies at 135 square feet. Right. And uh, they did that by taking, instead of putting the, the hallway down the center of the ship, they offset it on that floor so that they can have larger cabins on one side and the smaller 135 square foot cabins on the other side. So that's how they can easily fit 190 passengers. One of the standouts with both Emerald and Scenic is they have a dedicated at least one or two solo cabins. They're small, those are small cabins. But right. if you're a single passenger and you don't wanna pay double and they're not offering a promo, you know, for the uh, single supplement being waived, then it's really nice to have access to the solo cabins. If you're looking across the board, let's say comparing balcony cabins to all three with uh, Viking, you're at 205 square feet right. with Emerald 180 and with Scenic 210. And and Scenic and Emerald did an innovative uh, thing with their cabin. The cabin and the balcony are built within and they have a glass partition that separates the cabin from the balcony that can remain open. And then they have a button uh, that you can push and it will lower where the balcony glass will come down. So you have a built-in balcony. It's, it's really cool and very innovative and some of the ocean liners are doing that now. Oh, neat, neat. So, in terms of size, then, for, well, first of all, you probably recommend if you're going to if you're going to make an investment in a river cruise, folks probably want to have a balcony. I always recommend it. Yeah. I think the lower deck they are they're a good value. But yeah. I will tell you something: when you walk into those cabins, it feels a little bit like a fishbowl. You have um, upper, high up yeah. uh, windows that you're right at river level. So in a pinch, they work. And I have had clients book them. For the most part, all of our clients do book the balconies. I think everyone wants the fresh air. If they're having a drink, a cappuccino, and you're getting ready in your cabin, you like to have that flexibility and being able to open the window. Somebody once told me those river, river view cabins are actually the swan view cabins because you could have the swans swim up to the window and people. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They, and you're right. The swans are everywhere over there in Europe. So you're absolutely right. I think I think with all three, they run very similar itineraries. Right. So you need to you need to look. How important is the immersion of an itinerary? Do you want options for your itinerary that are included in your price? Emerald Waterways does an, uh, an enrich program where on every cruise they will do something special and it's usually in the evening an event that they hold that's included so for instance going to visit a family in Slovakia and enjoying cake and coffee with scenic they do the same thing theirs are pretty amazing for instance in Vienna we went to the Palais Liechtenstein and we watched a ballet and musical performance so it's an altogether different level of immersion and choices that you're going to have with Emerald and with Scenic having said that 
again, the Viking tour guides are fantastic and they do a really good job. And then they have those optional excursions that you can purchase. So long story short, you're going to have a good experience on any, any of these three lines. You better believe it. Uh, yep. It's just that with scenic and emerald, you're going to get a little bit more space in the public areas and a little bit more variety in amenities and you will. And, and, and you'll have those gratuities already included. You'll have, you yeah. know, the transfers that are already included with right. scenic, of course, all the beverages with Viking. You can buy what is called the silver spirits package on a seven night cruise that runs you about one hundred and forty dollars. All of that is always subject to change. So I have to preface that because the cruise lines are changing and it's the same with their promotions that they offer. So I have to take it day by day when a client calls me and, and you know, wants me to get a quote out. Um, they all change. They have great promotions. Viking has super air promotions that they offer. Right. So people find that very appealing. With Viking, I will tell you, they cater to a little bit older age than both both Emerald and Scenic. So I think that's important. You have to be 18 and above on Viking. There are no children allowed on Viking. Emerald and Scenic, 12 and above. But Emerald, I will mention, I just booked a family with a 10 year old and they do have a couple sailings every year, family oriented sailings for kids. And they cater a little okay. bit more to that. So that is a nice feature. Something that's important to my heart is that is, is food. How does the dining compare across all three? Well, can you, I'm a foodie. I'm a foodie. <laughs> I like to drink and I'm a foodie. Yeah. And I have to preface it with it is subjective. You know, right. I, I've been on these cruise lines, but I think by and far scenic has the better cuisine. I think that Emerald and Viking is neck and neck. But for me, I really enjoy the cuisine. In Austria, after our bike ride on scenic, it was cold. It had been rainy that day. We came in and they put out a spread with King crab legs and and had everything all of the warm food everything prepared for us they really do a great job on scenic with their cuisine right again that probably makes sense because scenic is a luxury river exactly cruise line as as opposed to viking and emerald which are premium, premium. Are yeah, premium. They're premium of the three lines you mentioned that the only one that actually provides room service is scenic yeah unless you're in a suite unless you're in a suite then it's different then you'll have like a mini bar and you'll have room service but it just comes even if you're in the riverview cabin on the lower floor with scenic and room service on scenic i believe begins at 11 a.m until midnight but if you are in the suites on scenic then it also will include breakfast so it is rare for any river cruise line uh, because of the amount of crew to be able to accommodate and to have room service. So that's the reason for that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I received a call the other day for clients looking at a Danube River Cruise. Now the Rhine is the most popular. I'll, I'll start by saying that second most popular are Danube River Cruises. And they wanted to go for May, 2024. So I did do a side-by-side -side comparison, if you'd like to hear it, of a kind of price point and where the balcony cabins are coming in at. I would love to hear about that. Okay. So with Viking, seven night cruise, and this goes Budapest to Regensburg, the base, I'll start with the base. The base price point was $46.99 per person. Right. Emerald, $39.45, and that's 180 square foot balcony. Vikings is 205 square feet. And then with Scenic, 210 square feet. It came in at $53.95. So as you can see, when you're comparing, if you were going Viking to Scenic, you are looking at a difference of, of almost $5,400 to uh, $4,700. So there is a difference in price. But then you need to add the tips on Viking, which come out at $140 per person. The beverage package, $175 per person. Optional excursions, if I was being conservative, we would say $300. I, I think that is being conservative. It really is. Right. Now you're up to over $5,300 with Viking. So you are coming in pretty much neck and neck on a balcony cabin between Scenic and Viking at almost the same price. Wow, that's interesting. And at the base price, Emerald was? $39.45. Then what I did with Emerald, I adjusted if you put in their beverage package, which is approximately the same as Vikings 175, right. 
And I thought, well, maybe people would want to book $300 worth of optional excursions on Emerald. Maybe not because you do have options already right. built in. Yeah. That came in at $44.20. So I know it can, hearing this can be a little bit confusing without seeing a chart. But yeah. ultimately, Viking and Scenic came in almost the same price point for a balcony cabin going Budapest into Germany in May. And then Emerald came in the lowest, almost $1,000 less. So Emerald definitely is at a lower price point. Again, they do cater to um, guests that are about 50 and up, and they do have more activities on board. Well, that is really, really interesting, Laura. Yeah. And I can tell you right now, we're going to hear from the Viking fans that, say, that are going to say, yeah, well, but... Uh. <laughs> you know what? Viking is fantastic. But they, I've escorted a group. But they, they are, are great, and you're going to have a great experience on them. And if you don't take any of the extras, they're still they're going to come in at a good value, right? Well, and the other thing that people need to know, you know, kudos to Viking. They contract so much air. Exactly. And they have air right now, and this is subject to change, but yeah. $5.99 a person round trip economy air. That is really hard to beat. And once you have the air with Viking, it does include your transfers. So that makes that feature nice. When you're comparing those three lines, the air could become a factor in leveling them up then, right? I think, has, I think so. I think yeah. when you're looking at it, it absolutely can. Yeah. What um, Scenic and Emerald have a promotion right now where if you pay in full within 10 months of your departure, you get $1,000 off per person. So they all have different promos and they, they you know, every cruise line, I don't care if you're talking about AMA Waterways, Tauk, they all have Uniworld, they all have promotions that they run. So it will depend when a client calls me what can be offered. With Viking, it's very important. One other thing to know, like right now, they have a 25 per person deposit, but final payment is due within a month or two after that anyways. So um, Viking always wants their money more upfront. You don't have as much time. We're scenic in Emerald. Did you have the wiggle room of doing your final payment about 90 days prior to sale? Right. You're going to be paying for your Viking cruise a lot, a lot, Wait, lot Yeah. Earlier. So if you're booking a 2024, 2025, just know that. No, you will be paying in full much earlier with Viking. Exactly. So what about the Wi-Fi on the ships? Laura? So Wi-Fi comes across on all three. You have right. Wi-Fi. Um, I will say while the ship is transiting through the rivers or through the locks, it gets spotty. Usually when they pull up and anchor or tether, the Wi-Fi is better. Another feature is, is Viking, because they've been around the longest, owns most of the docking rights. So right. they have first dibs on those docks. That doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot because what happens are the other ships pull up and tether next to the Viking ships. I find that to be an absolute blast because you get to walk over the tops of the ships to get onto the dock. Right. So, and um, that's rafting. They call yeah, they, they yeah. call that rafting. Yeah, rafting or you're, you're going to have exactly. like three ships side by side. Yep. Yeah. And Viking will most likely be the inside ship. Exactly. The other thing that comes to mind, Laura, when we talk about the rafted river cruise ships is going from ship to ship and getting through getting through are river cruises a good option for folks with mobility issues depending on the mobility issues so i do have some folks that have walkers and so long as they can step over thresholds i, I think it works well it is a little tougher with wheelchairs i'll be very honest right and so you are limited and i would also say in the ports that they pull up some of these smaller cities and towns in europe they have cobblestones. You need to make it over some paths. So it is a little bit more difficult. So it would be dependent on the level of mobility issue a person has. It kind of goes to the value of having a, a travel advisor in your corner when you're looking at a river cruise to, to compare the three lines so that you'll find the best line that matches what you want to do, right? I really take the time to get to know my clients. Mm -hmm. I like to find out, first of all, their best time for travel maybe some of the sites and things they'd like to see, their activity levels, of course, budget. And I'm very sensitive to that. And um, I try to pull together and give some options to clients and let them know my own thoughts, you know, which are, of course, subjective. But um, that's how we really work together and pull together the best journey 
for, for my clients. And when we think about time of year, one thing that raising its ugly head quite a bit last summer and probably this summer again is water levels. So last um, summer, they struggled with a lot of droughts. The river cruise lines, it doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. And there can be flooding. I've been on a cruise actually where there was flooding and we couldn't make it through due to that. So yeah. this is what I tell people. As with all things with travel, mother nature can wreak havoc. I don't care if you're on an ocean liner, if you're going by rail, however you're traveling. You have to look at this as an adventure. And for people that say, no matter what, I don't want it to become a bus trip or be moved to a hotel. I say, don't do a river cruise. Chances are that won't happen. But when it does happen, yeah, Yeah. when it does happen, and especially the months of like July and August for drought, the river cruise lines do the very best to slightly deviate from the itinerary, get you on a bus, get you to the excursions, or if they have to transition you to another ship, or get you to these beautiful hotels. So for me personally, being a world traveler, I find it an adventure. I know I'm gonna be taken care of by all three of them. Scenic and Emerald also, they're backed by Chubb Insurance, which is a national insurance company. And if you are inconvenienced up to a certain amount of hours, let's say you have to be bused for a long time or you miss a port of call due to the rivers, they actually put in an insurance claim and you're compensated. So it gives you a little bit of peace of mind. They do a really good job taking care of you. Oh, well, that's interesting to know because that, I- is, that, that, that is that is one of, one of the concerns, but people should be aware of that going in. Like if you're uh, going yeah. to go to Europe in July and August during their basically the drought season, yep. the the ships the the cruise lines are going river cruise lines are going to do the very best they can to accommodate. But if there's no water, there's no water, Absolutely. so it winds up becoming a bus tour. You don't want that to happen. But you, you mentioned want. you mentioned something that people don't realize what the the lengths that they'll go to is they'll transfer you to another ship. And how does how does that work? So um, we call them the uh, the little fairies that come right. on board and move all of your belongings and transition it to a sister ship. So that is on the other side of the lock or a, a bridge that maybe right. they can't get under. So we were on um, the Rhone River on a sailing and we had flooding and we couldn't get under some of the bridges because the ship it just raised too high. And that's right. exactly what they have to do. I just think full disclosure and if people know and have expectations that, hey, they're going to do everything in their power to take great care of you. But there is no perfect when it comes to travel with with air. Let me tell you, there is no perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so just to put a cap on this, Laura, who do you think is best suited for Viking and versus Emerald versus Scenic? So I think um, as you're looking at the premium products with right. Viking River Cruises and Emerald Waterways, I think depending on the level of activities, if you're a more active person, um, you're, you're going to get a good value on both. If you want more amenities on board your ship, like a pool and the e-bikes and all of that, I think Emerald would be a great fit. If you're looking for a little bit more stream down, streamlined with excursions, good food, good service, good value. Viking is fantastic. Uh, they've been at it a long time. We'll take super care of you. Right. If you have a little bit more money in the budget and you want more inclusivity, those e-bikes, those activities, the enrichment, super options for excursions and great cuisine, scenic. Scenic Luxury River Cruises is, is a great choice. Fantastic. Well, Laura, this is super information. What would you advise people that are looking to book a river cruise for, say, let's say in Europe for either this year or next? For this year, I would say call me last week. <laughs> <laughs> just that. No, we still, there. we still, just teasing. We still have some space for 2023 and even the holiday cruises. There's still some space in November, December, 2023. There are the holiday markets. And then for 2024, still, I would say right away, get a hold of me, you know, call, call my number, email me. Um, I will take great care of you and make sure we get you on, on a line that fits all of your needs and desires. Perfect. So the best advice is if you're thinking of a river cruise, You should be thinking, really thinking about booking a year in advance. Most of them do start to book a year in advance. I I already have people interested in 2025. So, but there are some great promotions. Some of the lines have included pre-nights or post-nights. There's, you know, the incentives with air or discounts. So there's some really good deals to be had out there on some fantastic lines I can help people with. 
Once again, the value of having a great travel advisor in your, in your corner to pull all these strings together. We know because we go is, is our true slogan. And we've been on the rivers. We've been on the cruise lines. We also book in so much volume that we sometimes get good discounts or shipboard credits that can be applied. And then even more importantly, we become your advocate. So if there are issues, um, we're there to fight on your behalf and you're not waiting on hold forever and having to deal with any issues that could happen during travel. But, well, Laura, this has been wonderful. If folks want to find out more information about their next river cruise vacation or get in touch with you, how would they do that? Call me. That's the best way. And it's 503-367-7541. You can always email me. Um, I'm happy to respond via email. And my email is Laura, L-A-U-R-A, -A, at cruiseholidays.com. And cruise is spelled unusual. It's C-R-U-Z, holidays, plural, dot com. Perfect. I'll leave those links in the description for folks looking to reach out to you. Sounds good. And I always have to ask, because... Your slogan is, we know because we go. <laughs> Where are you off to next? Well, I've got two things planned. So the immediate is a British Isles cruise. So something completely different, not a river cruise. And that's this July. And then we are planning a spring lower Danube cruise. So Budapest down to Bucharest. I've always wanted to go to Romania and uh, visit a little bit of Bram Stoker's the, uh Okay. Mansion. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so we're, we're really looking forward to that. Very interesting. I'll yep. let you in. I'll let you in on a little secret. Yes. A lot of us have done our ancestry and I can trace my, our ancestry back to Transylvania. So I have to, I have to go there too at some point. Oh, okay. So you haven't been, you should join us, Ken. <laughs> oh, well, don't say that too loud. You never know. <laughs> anyway, long story short, I look forward to hearing all about that when you get back. We'll have Absolutely. to have you back. Absolutely. All right. So with that, Laura, I'm just going to wish you safe and happy travels on all your future cruises and vacations. May the wind always be at your back. And I hope to see you on a Lido deck sometime soon. Thanks so much, Ken. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Right. And that about wraps it up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Laura Dotson of Cruise and Travel Specialists. If you'd like to reach Laura, I will leave her contact information in the description. If you'd like to reach us with a suggestion for another video or a comment, you can send a question to questions at Real Travel Experts, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or simply leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoyed this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels. <laughs>